Hello everyone, welcome to webinar on steel transmission tower using tower wizard in Midas Gen. I am Nivedita Kole, senior CAE technical consultant working in Midas IT. May you have any questions during or towards the end of the webinar? Please write here at the questions box. Before we begin, I would like to firstly introduce you to Midas as a company. It was 1989 when the developed software solutions became commercialized as Midas Software Solutions. Since then, the solutions have been distributed to over 120 number of countries. Midas has 514 number of employees, more than 18,000 number of clients and more than 60,000 number of users worldwide. Midas, with its headquarters in South Korea, has several branch offices in China, USA, India, Japan, Russia, as well as in UAE. Midas has two main business areas. One is in engineering consultancy and other is in software developments. It is thus obvious for the software solutions be developed to meet the practical requirements. Let me take you to a partial list of Midas users worldwide. We see these major companies that are using most of Midas software solutions. With this list, one can say how capable the solutions are to handle even complex projects. That's not it. But Midas, even though it is new to Sri Lanka, has been successful in providing solutions for research studies as well as practicing users. University of Peridinia, University of Morotua are major universities using Midas software solutions. Major companies like Access Engineering, CSE Consultants, Unica, Design Advocacy, DSC, LTL Holdings and many more are using Midas software solutions. Not just that, but even in government such as Mahavali Authority, National Water Supply Drainage Board and many others are using Midas software solutions. So these software solutions make Midas biggest computer-aided engineering software developer in civil engineering field. The family programs are into bridges, structures, geotechnical, as well as in mechanical. Under the bridges, we have Midas Civil, which is an integrated solution system for bridges and civil structures. From a simple box culvert or slab bridge to complex suspension bridges, cable state bridges or extra roads bridges, Midas Civil can handle the analysis and design of all types of bridges in a very short period of time. There is Midas FEA which is an advanced non-linear and detailed analysis system. Complex geometries can be modeled in Midas FEA with ease and analyzed for advanced nonlinear cases. Under the structures, there is Midas GEM, which is an integrated system for buildings and general structures. We can perform analysis as well as design in Midas GEM. There is Midas D Shop, which is an auto drafting and rebar detailing module. It can also generate bill of materials. Lastly, Midas Design Plus is a structural component design and detailing tool. The analysis results can be taken into Midas Design Plus with a simple link and the Design Plus can also generate drawings. The design performed in Midas Gen can also be taken to Midas D Shop to create the drawings. Under the geotechnical, 
there is GTS NX which is a 3D finite element analysis based geotechnical analysis system and there is SOLWORKS which is a 2D finite element analysis as well as analytical geotechnical solutions for practical design. Going towards mechanical there is MIDAS NFX which is solutions total solutions for mechanical engineering in structural mechanics and CFD. 3D CFD analysis can be easily performed in MIDAS NFX which can be useful as against wind tunnel test. MIDAS FX Plus is a preprocessor. It can model complex geometry with ease and can export to any of the MIDAS software solutions. So let me begin with the structural software solution that we will be using in today's webinar. That is MIDAS Gen. MIDAS Gen is a one-stop solution for buildings and general structures. That is why today in today's webinar we are going to see towers, transmission towers. So not just buildings but also transmission towers. MIDAS has applications in buildings, high-rise buildings as we can see over here, Burj Khalifa, Gangsa Twin Tower, Hanoi Landmark, Moscow City Palace are few examples of the applications. Myris Gen can also analyze and design plant structures such as blast furnace. These are few applications. We can see steel frames. We can see over here silos and industrial sheds. Applications are also in spatial structures like Beijing Olympic Stadium in China, certain stadiums and airports. Also specialty structures as you can see there are different geometries that were easily modeled in Midas Gen and analyzed. Over here as you can see this is a complete solid geometry, a complete solid masonry model of a temple for which stress nonlinear stress analysis was performed to look for stresses a stress limit check and perform the retrofitting and this one is a complete shell model so midas has applications in not only buildings and power plants stadiums, airports, hangars, but also pavilions, subway stations, transmission towers, which we are going to see today, cranes, pressure vessels, machine structures, underground structures also. When it comes to reliability of the program, then we take pride in mentioning that out of 20 skyscrapers, five have been analyzed and designed using Midas Gen program. The highest tower is the Kingdom Tower. Let us know why Kingdom Tower has used Midas Gen program. Midas Gen is the primary software solution for the highest skyscraper in the world that is Kingdom Tower. If it is 1.3 kilometers tall the reason why they have used MIDAS Gen program is firstly, the user interface of MIDAS Gen allows huge structures to be modeled and handled easily. MIDAS has a 64 bit solver speed. The graphics can be enhanced by using the GPU accelerators and NVIDIA GeForce graphics card. Thirdly, Midas Gen has a tight integration with its with Midas geotechnical software solution that is GTS NX. So the information between the geotechnical engineer and the structural engineer could be easily accomplished using this using Midas software solutions. The fourth reason 
is the column shortening analysis. Midas Jen is pioneer of column shortening analysis. With ease, one can generate construction stages in any construction sequence and achieve the results with the help of graphs. In today's webinar, we are going to be modeling a transmission tower. It's a lattice steel tower. It's a steel transmission tower for a double circuit, 220 kilovolts. You can call it as a suspension tower. We are going to be using these material properties from the British Standard 43A. And the section properties that we will be using is also taken from British Standards. So we will be assigning 200 by 200 by 24 equal angle section to main post, 200 by 100 by 10 to main bracing and so on for the other component members of our transmission tower. The total height of our transmission tower is 30.25 meters with a ground clearance of 8.58 meters. The sag of the lowermost conductor wires was calculated to be 10.4 meters. So accordingly, that height has been included. And vertical distance between the conductor wires is going to be 6.25 meters and 5 meters. And the square base width is 5.5 meters. The length of the cross arm from edge of hamper is 5.475. The span between two towers is going to be 200 meters and the length of wire between two suspension towers is 230 meters. When it comes to load application, we will be applying sulfate to our transmission tower and uh, the wind load information is right over here. We will consider the terrain type as plane. Basic wind speed will be 44 meter per second. Wind pressure will be calculated by the program. Return period will be 50 years and the rest of the information is regarding the conductors and the temperatures and so on of uh, the transmission tower. So now let us go to MidasGen software solution and create the transmission tower using tower wizard and apply the loadings and check the design results. This is MidasGen software solution. I would first like to explain about the user interface of MidasGen program. MidasGen comprises of a ribbon menu at the top with different tabs and all these tabs are arranged as per the work procedure. From left to right, we can see that the first four tabs are for geometry, modeling, then apply the boundary conditions, apply the loads, perform the analysis, check the analysis results, and then go ahead with the design and create reports. We have over here a toolbar with shortcuts. This is tree menu in which the works tree menu is important as you can see in the works tree menu nothing is there this is because only after you provide any information in the model the works tree menu will display that information so it's like a windows explorer unless and until you create a file you won't see it then we have the message window so whenever we provide any command if there is any error or warning it will be displayed right over here if there is any error, if the command is not doing anything, then we can easily understand what input is incorrectly done. We have the unit system at the bottom and we can change the views dynamically using these buttons right over here. Now, we're going to start with modeling of our tower. But before that, I would like to explain that there are four main methods of creating any model in Midas Gen program. Firstly, as you can see in the structure tab, these are the wizards. There are base structure wizards. 
like beams, columns, arches, frames, trusses, plates, shells. Then the tower wizard that we will be seeing today. So this is one way in which we can use the wizards and create the structure. The second is the grids wherein we can define the line grids and then we can go ahead and provide our nodes and elements on the line grids. The third approach is the CAD type of tools. You directly start creating the nodes and elements on the screen. The fourth method is by importing. We can import Revit or Tecla files in Midas Gen. We can import 2D and 3D AutoCAD DXF files. SAP as well as TAD files can also be imported in Midas Gen. So now let us start using the tower wizard for creating our transmission tower model. So I click over here and I'll go first with the tower leg. In the tower leg, I can provide information of each and every leg separately. So that's what I'll do over here. I have this width as 5, number of panels, these panels, this I'm keeping it as 3. W1 is 2.75 because my base is 5.5 meters. W2 is 2.5. I'm going to go 0.5 meters up with a height of 4 meters. Then I will just click on modify. So this is going to be our first leg. We can see the immediate display and then we can go ahead with the next leg. Same information will be input. 2.75, 2.5, 4 and modify. Third one. 2.75, 4. Basically, the program allows us to create a generalized structure as per your requirement. We are done over here with defining the four legs of the tower. Now we can insert this tower using this insertion point. So I'll just click on OK. As you can see over here, our tower legs have got created. Also in this tower wizard, the boundary conditions option was given. I'd like to show that again over here. Over here, the boundary condition option was given. So pin or none, you can apply the support condition later on or maybe create some additional structure below it like pedestals below it and then you can provide boundary support to those pedestals. But in case you would like to directly go ahead and perform the steel tower direct analysis, then you can apply the pin supports by using this option. So supports have been applied. Let us go ahead now with the tower body. In the tower body wizard, we are going to provide information W1 that is at the bottom. So at the top of the tower leg, we had come up to 5 meters. Now at the topmost end of this body, we are going to have width of 2.5 meters. The program will linearly vary our body parts until 5 meters of base and 2.5 meters of top width. The first one I will add is the horizontal. We have got so many patterns available for our horizontal element. So I'm going to be using the basic one. Okay, I'll save this model. Okay. So over here, we are going to be having a first horizontal. I'll click it on add. 
then we are going to have vertical in the vertical we have got different patterns available so most common patterns are available over here I'm going to be using this cross pattern there will be just one number of redundant and this one I'll provide a height over here the height will be 3 meters and then I'll click on add so as you can see the W1 is 5 meters and W2 is 2.5 meters and as I go on adding for example over here I'm going to keep on adding until 18.75 sorry this one is going to be 3.75 So after this, I will add one horizontal at 18.75. So accordingly, the dimensions will vary. So here we can see the program has automatically changed the height, uh, changed the width according to the, as per the height. So we are going to be finishing with this by applying this tower body on our leg. So that one will be giving a, by giving an insertion point. So this insertion point we can provide by looking at this view and providing at this point. We can easily understand it by looking over here. This is the first 2.5 minus 2.50. So that is where we want to apply. We can even check on these options to look at uh, display dimensions that we have applied. All right, so I've provided the same location and then I click on OK. So we are done over here with the tower body wizard. Next, I'll go ahead with the tower arm. So in the tower arm, we will be providing W1 as 2.5. And W2 as 2 meters. This is going to be the pattern, cross pattern itself. There are other patterns available. From the plane view also, we have different patterns available. So, accordingly, we can select. Then, further, we have got number of panels over here for our arms left arm and right arm we can choose to keep them or remove them so we will see that so number of panels will keep as 3 itself but the length this one is 5.565 and the height will keep as 2.5 similarly 5.565 and 2.5 the pattern, different patterns are available for the truss. I'm going to be using this pattern and we can keep it linear at the top or linear at the bottom. So as per our model, it is at the bottom. And from the plane type, we can see these are different available plane types available. For the plane type also, we have got different arrangements for the bracings all right after providing this information we go ahead with the insertion point so again this is going to be our insertion point which that can be dynamically taken by the program so no need to actually find out and then type it by ourselves as the box turns green it can detect on our model itself what the insertion point is or the coordinate is All right, I click on apply. Since we have got more number of bodies or rather tower arm wizard to be used for the upper bodies too. So upper sections. Now over here, I will not be using left arm and right arm, but only the middle portion. Only I have to do is provide this insertion point and of 
course I need to change this W1 and W2 now. W1 will be 2 and W2 will be 1.5. I provide this location and I click on apply. Next, again, I'm going to use the left and right arm and change the W1 and W2 values. That will be 1.25 at the top. Everything remains the same and I click on OK. Oh, I did not put the insertion point correctly. So this is 1.5, 1.25. Information is for such a pattern. Length is 5.565. This is going to be 2.5 meters. And the pattern is changing. All right. Then for the left, right arm, 5.565, 2.5. Pattern is different. Okay, so that's it. And the insertion point is this one. And then I'll click on OK. Yeah, that's OK now. Over here in the message window, we can see some overlapping because of the wizards. So we can just simply click on this check duplicate elements command. This is a very good feature in which after we click on this option, the program will not only show us where the duplicated elements were, but also delete them automatically. So we need not worry about anything about deleting the elements, searching and deleting them. So we are done with creating our transmission tower model. Now we can go ahead with the properties tab. In the properties tab, we are going to firstly create material properties. Over here, the program while defining the tower wizard in the tower wizard, the program has automatically created one material property. However, we do not want to have this material property. We'll modify this. Uh, we are going to be using type of design as steel. And the standard, we will change it to British standard, PS Steel, and select 43A from the database that is available in MIDAS. The properties of the steel are displayed right over here. These are taken from the code by the program. And I'll click on OK. So our property has been modified. Now let us go ahead to the section properties. By default, the program has provided the section property of 15 by 30 by 3 mm, which is not going to be desirable for our model. So we will have to modify it. So what we can do is we can double click and select from the database BS 493 and from here we can select the section property EA and UA equal angle unequal angle there are different other shapes also available for steel structures also if you click on add there are many other options available for defining the section property this was the one that we saw right now other than that we can have a user defined section property, a general section that can be imported from, from AutoCAD. We can also define steel reinforced concrete, such kinds. These are all available section properties. Combined ones are also available. So the star shaped and these are most commonly used definitions of section properties and there can be tapered section properties defined as well in Midas Gen. Vary linearly from the bottom and flush at the top. There are composite definitions also. A 
all right uh, since there are many properties to be defined I will not take much time but use import function that is available in my disk so you need not create a separate file as such and then use that file but you can directly import from an already created model file so I'll do that sorry this is not the one yeah so over here I have created some section properties I want to select only the top ones these ones and I'll click on OK so now these properties as we can see or as per the presentation that I have shown we can select from the section name directly and then we can go ahead provide a name so that we can easily understand which property we are assigning to what member all right so now I'll go ahead and close this we are done defining the material and section properties by default the first property has been assigned material property has been assigned to the entire structure so we need not reassign this property to our structure the thing that we need to do is modify the section properties assigned to our structure so for that we have got very easy feature that is a drag and drop feature now while the program created this entire model using wizard it also created groups we can simply select these groups by double clicking so let's double click and select and from the work stream menu I can drag and drop this property redundant property and the property will be automatically modified I'd like to show a closer look of this I select the main post and use the drag and drop feature to change the section property so it's that easy to modify the section property of our structure now instead of going to the two different tabs I can use a second tree menu it's an identical tree menu so from here I can select the group and from here I can drag and drop the section property And we are done with applying the section properties to all our members after assigning the properties let us go ahead to the boundary conditions now already the boundary conditions that is the supports have been applied on the, our transmission tower we can see that in the works tree menu Pin support that is constraining all the directions or the translations has been achieved. After boundaries, let us go ahead now to the loads. In Midas Gen, we can apply all sorts of loads on a structure. Static loads include the sulfate, pressure loads, lateral loads that is wind loads and seismic loads which we will be applying we will be applying wind pressure on our structure pressure loads and then flow loads can be applied we can also perform dynamic analysis linear as well as nonlinear response spectrum analysis can be done time history analysis in elastic time history analysis can also be performed temperature loadings can also be applied Post tensioning, pre tensioning can also be done. Construction sequences can be simulated in the program using time dependent material properties. The advantage is that the program can provide us with the con construction sequence graph that shows the shortening of the vertical members. Moving loads. 
can be applied on a structure for example on industrial shed where crane loading is to be applied the good part is that program can provide us the location of the vehicle because of which maximum reactions or displacements are taking place at a point or an element we also have heat of hydration analysis that is by modeling solid elements in midas gen we can provide the different boundary conditions and also we can include pipe cooling system to cater the increase in temperature and construction sequence for the hydration can also be simulated to extract right results settlement loads can also be applied in this webinar we are going to be applying only static loads and that to only sulfate and wind pressure so now first thing we need to do is starting from left to right we will be applying the static load cases first i will name sulfate as a dead load type of load case and for an example i will apply just one in one direction the wind load So firstly we are going to apply the sulfate and in the sulfate we are going to firstly select the sulfate load case and provide a scale factor of minus 1 in the z direction and click on add. Now we are going to go ahead and apply the wind loads. We are using this wind pressure. In this firstly we are going to define a wind pressure function. I click on add. Provide over here name as wind. We can create this function by using different functions, numbers, tools available over here. You can even directly paste over here the equation. And uh, this is going to be with respect to z. We can also have log logarithmic function over here. And I will provide over here brackets correctly. All right. Now, we need to see over here that our structure is non-zero or it is not less than zero otherwise we will get incorrect results. So for that since our structure is at minus 4 we will just move it upwards. So I'll click on OK close before I calculate I'll just go back to the node element tab and translate my nodes all the nodes at a height of let's say 1 meter I'll translate it 5 meters upwards and then I'll go back to wind pressure now this is going to start from 1 meter and end at 31.25 and the increment is 1.25 and then I'll click on calculate all right so here we have our functions our pressure defined wind pressure defined i'll click on ok and close now this function we're going to be applying on area to select the area we are going to do one by one we're going to select the arm post areas first then we'll select the body area and then we'll select the leg areas so the load case name will be wind load the angle is zero this means we are applying in x direction and we are going to use this wind function that we just defined select by elements and then after we select then we'll click on apply so for selection we have got different selection tools available and among these we are going to be using select by polygon since we have got inclined elements. Alright, so I'll just start selecting. So 
So I selected all these elements and now I all I have to do is click on apply. Similarly, I will be selecting these inclined for the body. And in that, uh, I'll unselect these braces since it will not detect the braces and it will show incorrect results then. So we will unselect, use the unselect by window tool and unselect this and then we'll click on apply. So here we have the wind pressure load applied. Remaining is the uh, leg. So I'll select again by using polygon and I'll click on apply. So here we go. We are done with application of wind load in the X direction. The next thing that we are going to do now is uh, simply go ahead to the next tab that is analysis and then we'll perform the analysis. With a very short period of time within 0.38 seconds the analysis has been successfully completed. In my test, I would like to also explain that uh, we are having P-delta analysis, buckling analysis can be done, linear buckling analysis, eigenvalue analysis can be done. Uh, other than that, I had explained about the loadings. So we have got control for the heat of hydration, moving loads, settlements, and we can also have non-linear material as well as geometric non-linear analysis in MIDAS Gen. Construction stage analysis can be performed. And we have got very special tool that is boundary change assignment that can modify the support conditions for different analysis cases. So that's about analysis. And now we'll move ahead to the results. Under the results, we'll go ahead and create some load combinations. Creating load combinations is very easy. You type the name and then you select the load cases from here. Other than that, you can also use the auto generation command. We have got steel as well as concrete and we can select from here the design code and just click on OK. We also can see over here that the program has automatically created the steel strength envelope. This is under the general tab. For performing the design, we need to have a separate group of combinations, load combinations. So I'll do the same thing, auto generate the load combinations. And using this, the program is going to now further perform the design. Before we go ahead with the design, let us look at the reactions. For the sulfate, let us see the Z, FZ reaction. So this is the FZ reaction. And for the wind loads, so we have got vertical reaction like this since the load is getting applied in the X direction. All right, then further, we can see the result for the envelope. So everything is uh, straight upwards, no issues. We are not having overturning as such over here in that case. All right, so that is the result of reaction forces moments. We can get this result in the form of tables also by simply clicking on this three dotted box. This is available for all the results that we check for. So here we go. We can check the results of the envelope and click on OK. I'll close this stream menu too for now. And here we go. We get the FX, FY, FZ values. There are no moments since we had pin supports. We can take this table into dynamic report table as, as well. This report table in which we can choose which columns are required, which are not, so I'm not selecting these. And then these can be used further in the creating of report. It's a very good feature. If you would like to know more about it, you can please write to us. All right, so under the results, we saw the reactions. Now let us look at the displacement contour of our structure. All right, so here we go. 
Let us see firstly the sulfate displacement. Oh, this is values. I'll use a deformed shape and a legend. Alright, at any point of time we can change the unit system to check the results. So in millimeters the deformation or the displacement is 5.8 mm. Similarly for the wind loads we can check. This is 1.39 mm and if we go ahead with the combination then it comes to almost 2 millimeters. So this is about the displacement contour. We can also take a dynamic report image of this. Next let us look into the forces. Beam diagrams. I'll make it undeformed and make it solid fill. So this is how we can get our results. We'll make it exact. Alright, and after we are done checking this, we can go ahead, we can even see the values actually on our screen, so that's no issues. We can see the actual forces in the structure. So as we expect over here on these legs, the forces are really high and they go on reducing as we go up. Alright, so that's it about the results. There are other things that we can check like stresses. We can check the beam stresses, truss stresses as well. And uh, we can have user-defined diagrams that can include your forces and uh, all, the, all the forces and your forces and moments. And then further, after we check the results, then we can go ahead with the design. So let us look into the design results. Firstly, we will change the code to British standards, BS5950. Provide uh, the different parameters like slenderness correction factors and uh, we can also click on define definition of frame. See if uh, the structure is braced, unbraced and then accordingly we can check on the option to auto calculate the effective length factors. And then further we can also see the other general design parameters. We can modify the effective length factors manually also. Unbraced lengths can be provided. Limiting slenderness ratio can be changed. Equivalent moment correction factors can be applied and so on. For now, I will go ahead and perform the steel design. We have steel code check as well as steel optimum, optimal design. In steel code check, the program will check with the code and provide us with the results. OKs and OK star and G star like that. These are some notations to, to let the user understand how the program is um, passing or failing or I mean how the elements are passing and failing. And uh, we can check the details also in this form of table which can be copied and pasted into Excel sheets. We can see from here the graphic detail and check the results. This is a summary. This can be saved into a bitmap file and used in your reports. Also, we can get a detailed report of the design calculations. And the detailed report is so good that the program actually provides us with the references. All the formulae are also as per the codes. So if, if at all you have uh, seen got any M element failing, you can check from the detailed calculations why it is failing, where it is failing and uh, what can be modified in the structure or in the section property to pass it.
Then further we can also modify modify our section property with the strength requirement checks. All we need to do is uh, provide it information of uh, the database like from the code, the shape, we can also modify the shape and we can also uh, provide a special case, a special section property case by using mgb file. Then I'll click on search satisfied section. So it is suggesting that 125 by 75 by 8 is good enough for the main post. So I can select this. Of course, it is going to reduce the uh, weight of the structure. I'll click on change and close. And then I can go ahead, click on update to, mod to update and uh, yep, put it in the properties before change and get the structure reanalyzed and rechecked. All right, so this main post is good enough. It is still providing a combined ratio of 0 0.352, but uh, of course we need to take care of the slenderness or ratio too. So let us see how the program has optimized. So similarly, we can go ahead and perform this change or and have the program provide us with the different section properties good enough to pass this structure. The results over here, as we see, over, uh, are with respect to the properties. So this is like out of all the elements having one section property, the most critical element results have been put up and shown to us. But if you want to check the results for each and every individual member, then we can click over here, sort by member and see it. So if I say connect model view, then I can check this one and see that this is the element or this is the member which is going to get designed or which has been designed by the program right over here. Midas Gen also has a steel optimal design wherein it will check the weight and optimize the structure taking care that that section property is also going to satisfy the strength check. So that is about um, design of steel transmission tower in Midas Gen program. You can also see which members are failing by looking at this result steel design. This is the combined and you can get this contour and click on apply. So from here we can see the values and we can provide over here to reset the maximum and minimum values. So maximum value we can set it to 1. So those that are going above 1 so that's it and accordingly we can observe if any of the elements have turned red so that's not the, not the case all the values are below 1 And that's how you can easily understand if any of these sections are passing or failing from the view. And you can take the dynamic report image out of it and use it further in the report generations. So that was it. Let us go back to the presentation now. So by using the Tau wizard or by using Midas Gen, let us look at the benefits. The benefits include ease in modeling of transmission tower using tower wizard and there are fast general modeling tools as well. So after you create the wizard, you can again edit it and there are fast modeling tools if you're going to create anything in addition. 
In one software for one model itself, there can be steel as well as concrete members and you can design them. There is a huge database available as per British standards for steel section properties. You can perform advanced analysis for steel structures like P-delta analysis, buckling analysis, eigenvalue analysis, as well as material and geometric nonlinear analysis. Last but not the least, we can perform design of steel members in which we have we can have uh, use of British standards and there is a design optimization tool to optimize our steel structure. That is it. Hope you like the webinar. Uh, hope this webinar was useful to you. And uh, in case you have any questions, please write at the questions box. We will be answering to all the questions that you have written in the form of an email that will be sent to you. So thank you very much for attending the webinar on transmission towers, steel transmission towers using Midas Gen, which is a one-stop solution for buildings and general structures. If you have any queries, uh, one thing was already told earlier regarding writing at the box uh, below. Or you can go at um, or you can visit our global support.midasuser.com website. That is our support website. You can look for some solutions or you can write down your queries over there also. All your queries will be listed under one uh, location itself. So it will be easier for you to track later on. So that's global support.midasuser.com for you. And other than that, you can reach to me at nivedita at midasid.com for any queries on this webinar or any other questions that you would like to know about in Midas Gen. All right, uh, then I would be ending the webinar now. Thank you again for attending the webinar. Have a great day.